Because I don't know. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, brother. We got. We don't have enough time on this show for you and I to chat and apologize to each other. We just need to do the interview. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and all that. Well, I'm Adam Muskowitz, uh, basically from a little town in uh, northeast Ohio called Elyria. Uh, and I just want to be a freaking movie star. That's it. <laughs> I just want to be a freaking movie star. Hey, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I everybody, uh, you know, they always say everybody wants to be something. I'm glad you want to be a freaking movie star, brother. I'm waiting patiently. I'm not going down without a fight. It's been a long time. I got a lot of hours and years talked into it. It's a lot of frustration, but you know the cliche. You just don't give up, you know what I mean? There you go. Now tell us how you got started uh, doing this uh, Hollywood thing and all this other stuff. Well, basically, I, I got the opportunity to be in an independent film here in Northeast Ohio. Um, that was one thing. And then I get these little acting gigs where I either play a fracker or a truck driver or a paramedic. And then, lo and behold, a, a dear old friend got an idea to make a movie called The Truth About Elvis. And we worked out, we are still working on that. It's shot, all the principal stuff is done. We actually, a, one show is spun off of it. A second show may spin off of it. And uh, those are kind of where all, all my eggs are in that basket. And it's sort of a waiting game right now. That, that could be my home run. In the meantime, I you know I make some songs and videos and do fun stuff on YouTube and uh, get little gigs from time to time. And you know I'm in Northeast Ohio, so you know from time to time they shoot a big movie here, but I have no interest in being an extra. You know what I mean? Don't want to be an extra. Forget about being an extra, Don't brother. Be you need to be you need to be the headline. You need to be in the main event. You need to be the big star. You need to be. It needs to be so big time. There needs there needs to be two G's in it. Forget about it. Uh, <laughs> now, um, social media. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing on social media, brother. Essentially, on Facebook, I'm sort of, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, all my friends are growing up with kids and everything. I have a kid, yeah. but he's probably more mature than I am. But I kind of, amongst my contemporaries, I'm kind of the shock jock of everything. I still, I still talk about my dalliances with ladies and my uh, over, uh, you know, uh, you know, alcohol abuse on there, and I'm not afraid to, you know, party or tell somebody if I had a rough day. That's basically on Facebook. Twitter, I just kind of touch in there. You know, I mostly do that because it's trendy, but I never really got on with getting a lot of followers and everything. Uh, but I'm really proud of my YouTube station. And that everything, if anybody ever wants to follow me or be my friend, everything's Adam Muskowitz. My name is very distinguished. You just spell the first four or five letters and it comes up. If anybody ever wanted to Google me or any, look at my stuff, I'm Adam Muskowitz. You can't, you know, M-U-S-K-I-E-W-I, C is in cat, Z is in zoo. But no, I, there's a song I'm really proud of. I hope uh, you'd like it. I don't know. It's called I Know What That Booty Looks Like. Yeah. It's got this nifty little video. What's that? No, go ahead. I'm just I'm just agreeing with you, homie. Keep it going, man. Keep it going. Yeah, no. That's it. Um, I'm really, really proud of that song. It, we, we all think it could be a smash hit, but the, for now, it's just a cool little video my friends and I put together on uh, YouTube. And, you know, I know what that booty looks like. You know, you can't hide that booty from me. I, I'm really proud. It's like a Milky LL Cool J song. I'm <laughs> <like it. laughs> We've got Adam Muskowitz with us today, uh, joining us here on Radio Xenu. Check out RadioZenu.com. And uh, I guess the line of the day is he just wants to be a frickin' movie star. And uh, he's an actor, he's a writer, he's a filmmaker, he works hard to entertain and inspire. He has limited resources, but he's developed many conceptual films and books. He's still seeking to produce his first dramatic feature, a project entitled Spite. Tell me about Spite. Oh, Spite. Exciting thing about Spike, my friend and I, his name's Jeffrey, he's, um, he and I wrote that film in the middle 90s, and, and then, and we did some work, you know, we were, you know, we're, we were children, basically, and you know, you, when you're a kid, you know 10 rich people, then you ask all 10 of them That's for right. five million bucks, you know what you're asking it for, if they tell you no, then, you know, then you don't know where to go. But the exciting thing about Spike was it's a gangster superhero film. So basically, the exciting thing was that was right when they, you know, 
the first Spider-Man started getting press for coming out, and then they said, oh, now we're going to do X-Men, and now we're going to do Hulk, and, you, and I don't need to tell anybody how many superhero films they're making now. I can't even count them anymore. <laughs> but the cool thing now, fast forward all these years, Spike could literally be one of those uh, films that they just, Hollywood just makes nine of them, you know, for whatever reason. It's, it's an endless sort of story. You know, and, and you know, that, we ever shine the light on that, it could be big. I mean, it, it's cool. It, it's the same thing, the duplicitous nature, like, uh, you know, I'm uh, Peter Parker, I'm a nerd by day and a hero by night. Well, this guy, he's a nice guy by day. For example, if you cut off the hero in traffic, you know, at 4 p.m., well, then around midnight, he turns into Johnny Spite and he finds you and, you know, he, you know, he, he puts the gangster beat down on you. So that's basically the concept. The gangster that. beat but down. The, the I love that. Stuff. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but the, the, the emotional side, though, is, is, our, <laughs> is everybody's challenge about exercising your personal demons and, and things of that nature. It, you know, nothing new. Nothing new <laughs> under the sun, right? <laughs> Adam Muskowitz with us today. We have um, two studio guests who are, last I checked, on their way here. Um, one of them, I believe, has gotten lost in South Hutchinson, which is apparently, um, and I've never understood this, but the GPS gets people lost in South Hutchinson if they're coming to Hutchinson, Kansas. I don't understand that. Um, the other guest is supposedly bringing his video and camera person here. So I don't know if this is actually going to happen today. Um, our very first guest, we had him on the phone, and then when we were waiting for our Artist of the Day music to be done, he hung up on us. And so Adam Muskowitz, out of nowhere, calls us. He was supposed to be on our other show that we were taping earlier today uh, called Build, Grow, and Enjoy, but Adam happened to just get the prime spot. And he's here with us now. And um, Adam's most uh, most noted project is a documentary. We talked a little bit about that earlier. The Truth About Elvis, which looks at both sides of a conspiracy surrounding the death of the great Elvis Presley. He worked with uh, Warren Zide from American Pie and Final Destination. Also Dan Bliss, CEO and founder of PerfectBusiness.com on this project. Tell me a little bit about The Truth About Elvis. Oh, that... My, that team you mentioned, Warren Zide and Dan Bliss and I, we put together the most thorough investigation of the mystery surrounding Elvis's death, just simply unmatched. We have his autopsy, we interviewed his whole, his entire entourage. Uh, the most interesting part of that story is Elvis, Elvis's dad, Vernon Presley, actually orchestrated a grave robbery. He found this guy who was like a known local hood, if you will. Yes. He said, uh, you know, they pulled him behind the typical thing there, go behind a drug mart or a five and dime or a Rite Aid, whatever, whatever, you know, PBS <laughs> you guys might have in your, your, your market. Oh, yeah. Hey, I need, I need you to spook the authorities and spook the media into scaring them and allowing me to move Elvis's body to Graceland. Now, he put it under the guise of that was one of Elvis's wishes to be buried at Graceland. But the neat thing about that, the, the thing that'll make you think is, do you realize we could end this Elvis argument, dead or alive, by simply exhuming, okay? And we all know the police, FBI, whatever, they can exhume anybody they want if they need to solve a cold case crime, for example. Okay. However, the difference is, when you exhume on public property, yes. they have the right to do it. So now they can't touch Elvis's grave because it's on private property, and the secret will always be protected unless the family grants them that. And why would they do that? They're making $15 million to $25 million a year off of the attraction that is Graceland and the brand that is Elvis, and this mystery is a huge, huge part of it. So if they had something to protect, they did it perfectly it's just it's just crazy one of our shows we have it's not even in development anymore it, it's done it's ready it's being shot it's called elvis's autopsy revealed and all this stuff is outlined in, in, in that show it's a spin-off of the all the footage we got from the from shooting the truth about elvis it's just a riveting top of the line for elvis fans for conspiracy types all over it, it, it simply can't be beat 
I don't know what's taking so long. I'm again, I'm just the actor guy, movie star guy. You know what I mean? Um, That's right. Because as we recapped earlier, all you want to be is a freaking actor. I love that. Adam Adam Muskowitz. Go ahead, sir. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Well, I'm just, I just want Elvis fans to know because they find me on social media and they hammer me. They're like, Where's, when's the gosh damn film coming out? You know what I mean? And the, and the truth is, like I said, I'm just the actor guy. So if I could pull the strings and get it sold and get it distributed, they, everybody would be watching it right now. But that, those things, are those legal things and that business stuff is simply not in my hands. Adam Muskowitz with us today here on the broadcast. Adam, um, I'm going to hold you over for a next for another segment. Um, our studio guests have not arrived. I don't know when the hell they're going to get here, even if they will get here. Um, so we're going to hold you over for another segment. When we come back, we're going to chat a little bit more.